student is Anderson Brown for the word confidence. We've had Anderson for a couple of years now and we have watched him grow from a young boy to a fine young man. Um, Anderson, I think when he first came to us, probably wouldn't have talked to the person sitting next to him. And now he's addressed our cohort uh, with our friends down at South Elementary. He is working in the library, learning how all those systems operate, and that translated, and he's working for Christian County Library as well. So we're really proud of all the strides Anderson has made, and uh, he makes our job fun to do. I think uh, Anderson has done something that probably no one in this room has done, he is a published author and has a book that you can purchase at Barnes & Noble. So we can all say we knew him when, uh, when we see the series of sci-fi dystopian novels. Oh, got it right. um, anyway, it's, it's a pleasure to watch him grow and change. Um, also, we have Bailey with us tonight, too. Bailey Whitmore is our February word for um, empathy and compassion. And I'm gonna read you what Ms. Stein had to say because I think she knows Bailey best. 
Bailey quickly stands out as a student who exemplifies compassion and empathy. She assists her best friend, Bailey, as she navigates medical concerns at school, handling every situation with grace and patience. Bailey is also kind to everyone at school. You will find her being able to navigate any friend group with ease. She also shows compassion to her teachers by being the first to laugh at all of their jokes. <laughs> Additionally, over the past school year, I've witnessed Bailey demonstrate compassion for herself. She is continuing to mature and progress and as she processes who she has been and wants to be. Showing compassion for ourselves is no easy task, and I've learned so much from being a small part of Bailey's journey. <laughs> Thank you guys. Next we have Hyper Paul Murray, Governor Center, Dr. Good evening. <laughs> Tonight I am so excited to present Ms. Marley Nichols for confidence. She is such a fun, exciting little personality that brings so much joy. Her teacher, Ms. Brooks, was not able to be here tonight, but I wanted to read what she said about Marley, and she is in one of our four or five-year-old preschool classrooms. So, Ms. Brooks says, the Marley is such a joy. She lights up a room and is always so positive and encouraging. She has such a beautiful imagination. Marley can make friends with anyone and is always welcoming. She is always willing to try new things and encourage others to do their best. She has been a pleasure having it has been a pleasure having Marley in class, and she wishes that she could keep her forever. She knows that she's going to change the world someday. So Miss Marley really is someone special. She just lights up a room every time she's in it, and she wanted to say something too. Charles Stewart. It has been an honor, certainly, to be his principal. 
and I have with us Mr. Good, who would like a few moments to tell you about Charles. Um, before that, though, I would like to read to you something that his teacher, Mrs. DeMont, who is not able to be with us tonight, has said about Charles. Okay? Charles displays a belief in his own ability. He sees his faith as learning opportunities and has the growth mindset of an I can instead of an I can't. He is confident in his own understanding of content and willingly shares his knowledge with his classmates. I love watching him help our other students. His patience in explaining solutions or sharing his thoughts on a topic is evident as he works with others. He is willing to share ideas that are outside the box, and his confidence in sharing out amazes me. He questions, he advocates for himself, he perseveres, and he is willing to stand up for what he thinks is right, even if it differs from the group. All of these attributes make Charles a confident learner. He is such an amazing kiddo, and I am so lucky to have been given the opportunity to get to know him and have him in my class this year. So, seven years ago, I think, mm -hmm. um, Charles has been, we come to the car pickup line, his little four year old brother, and I get to pick on him and get high fives from him, and generally just antagonize him a lot mm -hmm. as with the car pickup line. And then kindergarten, first and second, they're all the way up in fourth grade. And over the years, um, we've just gotten to know Charles very well. And um, I can talk about his confidence. I can talk about his amazing gifts at writing and just the, the genuine compassion he has for all the other kids in class. But aside from the gifts is the fact that Charles himself is a gift. We are so thankful that we've had him for all these years. And, um, Excited about the man he's going to become. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. So I'm going to have Mrs. McLean, her teacher, and then Mrs. English, who knows Charlotte well, um, to talk about how she portrays confidence. Okay, so I've gotten to know Charlotte over the last couple of years. She joined us last year in just elementary, and um, she is such a soft-spoken little girl. But yet she is a very, very strong leader in our third grade group. Um, she's one of the best leaders that we have, even though she is quietly confident. She may not be the loudest in the room. She may not be the person trying to get all the attention. But you know that how she leads by example that all of her classmates will follow her lead. Her friends in her classroom look up to her. They look for her to see what she is doing right so that they can follow her lead. She's also one of those students that they're always looking for help from her. She is willing and able to help any student in her class. But one of my favorite traits about Charlotte is her willingness. <laughs> Charlotte gave me permission to share this story. This is how we kind of got to know each other last year. I know that Charlotte is a very bright student. I know that she's quick on her feet. She's very witty. We had an annual restaurant at our school for our second graders, and um, she was my server that day. And she was a fabulous server. She was trained very well. Honestly, probably didn't need all the training she got, but she was trained well. So she uh, took my order, my food was delivered. She came back to check on me to make sure everything was okay, which most second grade waiters do not do, but she did. And so when she came back to check on me, I thought, you know what, I'm going to challenge her because she loves challenges. 
She's great at challenges. My challenge was telling her that my food was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. I said it was the worst food, the worst hot dog I've ever eaten. <laughs> Not my perfect choice of foods, but it was pretty bad. It was actually really good. But I thought I'd just tell her that. And her response was? What was your response? Karen. <laughs> Karen. So, <laughs> since that day, from that day forward, she confidently gets out of the car in those days and greets me not as Mrs. English. Good morning, Karen. <laughs> and I say back to her, good morning, Minnie Karen. <laughs> <laughs> so she is a fabulous leader in our third grade, and we love her dearly. She is just a great all around student. I'm going to let this plan play more about her classroom, how she's in the classroom. <laughs> I just couldn't feel more joy and privilege to be able to talk about Charlotte. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. Um, I chose her to receive the portrait of graduate trait for confidence. We talk a lot in our classroom about how confidence comes from your inner coach inside of you and the power of the yet. You know, something could be hard now, it might not be hard forever. Um, and she, um, she just exudes confidence in everything she does. She looks at a challenge and that is her mindset. It is, you know, that might have this challenge, but you know, I got this. Like she just, has so much inner confidence. She speaks um, so much confidence into her friends and her classmates. Like Mrs. English said, she's such a leader in our classroom. And her friends do look to her for um, guidance when it comes to challenging things. And so being able to just be a small part of Charlotte's life has been truly an honor to me. And I'm just so proud of who she is and who she's gonna become. So thank you. Thank you. was about six or seven years ago, and Kate and my daughter are really good friends. You have to know that. So they are hanging out at our house, and we're getting ready to go trick-or-treating, and Kate and my daughter are dressed in their little princess outfits, and so I walk up to them, and we're talking before we're getting ready to go trick-or-treating, and I, I tell them, well, don't you ladies look lovely? And they're like doing their curtsies and stuff, and so then I ask them, so where are you guys, is, where is your kingdom? Where are you, you know, rulers of? And Kate's response was, 
the world. And, and so in that moment, she's affectionately been dubbed in my household as Kate the Great. And um, she is an absolutely amazing young lady. And that level of confidence, I think this is a perfectly yeah. fitting uh, trait for her. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Sherman. Kate the Great, not Hey, <laughs> I'm your writing teacher, so I wrote something for you. Fitting. Um, as a teacher, when you think about all of the things that a student needs to be portrayed as a graduate, students like Kate come to mind. Students who are confident, even though, and students who take risks, even though it's really scary to say your answers in front of your peers sometimes, right? But she still does it, even when I can tell she's a little bit nervous to do it. Kate is confident like that, and she pushes other students to be their best selves, too. She is kind, deep, think, deep thinking, and empathetic to others and their learning. As I'm looking at this note paper I'm writing on, it says, the best teacher ever. It makes me think, hey, students like you, may teachers want to work to be the best teacher ever. We are so proud of you for being a great representation for the Tiger Tribe team, and I want to congratulate you on being the OMS Confident Portrait of a Graduate. <laughs> Team Africa, and he was unanimously voted by uh, his Team Africa teachers. Uh, they put a nice little blurb here together that I'd like to read to you. This is a reflection of you from what your teachers see. Okay? Uh, Drew's an eighth grader here at OJH. He exudes confidence in every aspect of his academic and social life. Whether it's presenting in front of the class or presenting in group discussions, he demonstrates a remarkable self assurance that sets him apart. His ability to articulate his ideas with clarity and conviction reflects a deep sense of belief in his capabilities. Drew's confident demeanor not only positively influences his own learning experience, but also inspires his peers to approach challenges with a similar level of assurance. Drew, I want to thank you for using your confidence to be a leader in our building and to make OJH a better place for kids. Thank you, congratulations. held in Springfield, and this was a, a competition about programming. And we have a really nice, shiny, large trophy down in the computer science department, uh, thanks to Nick and his leadership with, with the other students. So congratulations, Nick. Uh, kids 
which is incredible, and I want you to know how incredible. The next school in our district had about a third. The next school. And so that's pretty cool. So really proud of them. Um, there were 1,200 approximately auditioning at state, um, 11 districts, which is very cool. If you count the number, because there were about 600 in our district, we think it's approximately 6,000 that they have to rise to the top to make it to state. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you about the kids. These kids are growth mindset kids. They believe that hard work trumps talent every day. So they work hard, they've been working since last year, most of them, to make it to this point. Um, we are missing one, Ellie Harmon. She is absent because she is sick. Um, Ellie Harmon made first alternate all state oboe. This is her second time to make it. So, Ellie Harmon. Um, the next one is uh, Laura Wolf. She made honorable mention for all state French horn. This is her second time. Um, Molly Harrell. Um, is a senior, and actually so is Laura. Um, Molly Harrell made honorable mention all state trombone. And then we have Asher Laramore. Asher Laramore is a, a junior. This is his second time to make it. He made second seat in the all state band. And I do want to point out there were about 80 that tried out for district on trumpet. So he was really high in our district and then rose to the second seat in the state. That's incredible. Um, he is a, he also made three all-state audition slots. So he auditioned with three different packets. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Derek Janicki is a senior. He is a second um, time all-stater and he made all-state trombone. And then Elliot Judy is our last one. And Elliot is a three-year all-stater on jazz guitar. And he is also a senior. So Elliot Judy has been accepted to Belmont and he's waiting to hear from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Those are really high level. <laughs> so we're waiting on both of those. Um, he, he is accepted to Belmont, he's just waiting on how much money he's gonna get. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, I want you to know that Derek and Asher represented us at the uh, convention. They played with the All-State Band at the end of January. An unbelievable experience for me and for them. And I want you to know that um, Elliot, he had to turn it down because he was performing with a professional ensemble. And so he um, did a selfless deed and he stepped aside and let the alternate go. And that alternate was from Chaminade and he had an amazing experience while Elliot was touring in Canada. Oh, no. So I wanted to do that. Very proud of him. Thank you. Here tonight, so we had two, uh, sorry, two full-time full members uh, 
uh, Harley Preston and Cameron Mayfield are full members, as well as Matthew Baum, who's not here because he's starring as George Banks in uh, Sprinkle Little Theater's production of Mary Poppins Jr. Um, so he's also a full member, and then we have an alternate, uh, Ella Hulse, who's a junior, and then an honorable mention, Andrew Schubert, who's also a junior. Uh, we also have an additional student who was uh, honored to be part of a brand new all-state uh, ensemble that was created just last year. It's kind of an experimental thing. It's called The Collective, and it is meant to encompass musicians that fall outside of the band, orchestra, choir world. And so there's uh, country music, rappers, songwriters, folk singers, they all come together at the conference that the Allstate ensembles perform at, and they write their own set of music. They create an entire kind of rock, folk, country, rap concert and perform it uh, for the other Allstate kids that are there uh, to be a part of the other ensemble. So Easton got the chance, Easton Beasley uh, was uh, selected for the collective, and he got to perform an original country music song that he had written with a backup band to a room full of about 600 screaming teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> really exciting for him. So it's an incredible honor. We're incredibly proud of them and, and the work that they have done. Yes. Thank you. Gets our meeting started off right, and it makes us realize why we love the Elvis Award. So, thank you guys. Have a good night. Oh, and we need to have a patient. We'll be right back. <laughs> So 
so Dr. Brownfield um, asked us to sort of give you an update on academies, and so I brought some a, a colleague, um, Mr. Bryant, and a couple of students as well. So um, just to kind of start off, I'm not going to go over the academy model with you again. I think that you probably um, I have to figure out how to work this. I think you probably know what academies are, but just to kind of um, regroup from where we started about two and a half years ago, when the academy leader team sat down to, to really flesh out what we wanted academies to look like, and we wanted to make sure that we had this, this strong foundation to our program, we came up with three pillars. And so we, have, we came up with culture, connection, and capstone. And so each thing that we're presenting tonight has to do with one of these pillars. So first of all, for connection, or sorry, for culture, um, culture was making sure that students feel like they are a part of Ozark High School, feeling like they belong, finding a place with other students that have the same interests as them, finding the teachers that have those interests as well. And one of the things that I think we've done really, really well, it's been very, very successful, has been the ninth grade Academy Explorations class. Um, Trent Floyd and Kayla Davidson are the teachers for that class. It's a semester class and every single freshman takes that class, uh, either first semester or second semester. Um, we wanted the students to know all the opportunities that we have at Ozark High School because we have so many of them. But more than that, we, we didn't just want them to know all of those opportunities. We wanted them to experience as much as they possibly could. So um, Mr. Floyd and uh, Ms. Davidson, basically go over each one of the six academies with the students. They do activities. You can see there's some culinary, some art. Um, I think that might be choir. Um, so the kids really get to, to get their hands dirty and, and play around with the equipment that we have here and all the resources and just, again, all the opportunities that we have. So um, that's one part of what we have been doing. Next, I'm going to have Mr. Bryant talk about connection. Hi guys, uh, one of the things that we've been doing as academy leaders is working on connecting with different people and stakeholders that are in the community. We've had lots of different opportunities trying to connect students with people that they might share interests with um, and, and take them out into the, the world too. Um, so you can see here some of the different guest speakers we have. We've had so many that it's too many to put on, on the, the, the slide here, but field trips to these different places. I know that in my, I'm in the engineering academy and some of the things that we have done um, with the guest speakers is bringing in different um, different people, community stakeholders like uh, Willard Laser came in and he showed a, a CNC laser demonstration and um, a bunch of different things that, that kids might be interested in. One of my goals has been to hit all of the different pathways in my academy and make sure that there's something for everybody because I think that as we grow it's important to make sure that each of those pathways is included and so this year um, I actually took a a field trip up to Prime Trucking. We had a partnership that Dr. Goldberg set up for us, and we went up to Prime Trucking and we toured their facility, and it's absolutely incredible. The kids got to see not only the repair bays, but um, all, all of the different inner workings there. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's amazing. But anyways, we, we uh, I know all of the other academy leaders have worked to set up field trips and bring in guest speakers and opportunities for kids to connect with and learn from people that are in our community and surrounding area. So uh, with that, Further ado, I want to introduce Capstone mm -hmm. students here. We have. Um, oh, sorry, on the wrong way. There's one thing that is for sure about technology: it consistently, <laughs> consistently fails. <laughs> First Capstone student, Nikki Lipton. Hi, I'm Nikki Lipton. I'm a senior here at Mozart. And I'm uh, in the Natural Resources along with the Engineering Academy because I have interest in both of the academies. And uh, this year I've been working on my project and I've gone through a lot of challenges and changes in my project. At first I was working with uh, Mr. Edwards, the Academy Leader of the Natural Resources uh, Academy. And I was going to, and people at Garrison Springs, and I was going to make uh, a bird viewing area at Garrison Springs um, because I'm rather bird obsessed. Uh, as everybody that knows me uh, knows that. And, uh, but their timeline and resources looked quite different uh, than ours. And so I switched more just uh, to bird education in my community um, through, I required a grant, I, I applied for and got a grant from uh, the Audubon Society up in Springfield. And 
I'm with this grant, I'm going to get binoculars, mm -hmm. and then I was thinking of a place to have the binoculars, and uh, I reached out to the elementary schools and the science teachers, and at North Elementary, they have an a outdoor classroom. And so I reached out to them, and uh, I'm going, uh, the first graders are learning about animal adaptations, so I'm going to go in and teach the first graders about uh, uh, birds because they have a lot of and a lot uh, a lot of adaptations along with uh, gifting them the binoculars to use in their outdoor classroom um, and uh, another aspect of my project uh, I worked with Miss Jenkins my past biology teacher and science Olympiad coach and um, we went to Eagle Days a program at the Nature Center with the Science Club. Um, and uh, I worked with some people that I know from Audubon Society, and uh, we're gonna have, they're gonna bring some birds out when I teach the kids at North Elementary uh, after spring break. They're gonna bring a hawk and an owl to really show these kids uh, up close the adaptations that these birds have. Um, and so the my capstone project has taught me like that I need to be adaptable and the importance of. Uh, organization and networking with people and just knowing people and being able to work with them um, has been a big part of uh, learning uh, in my project and uh, this is this will help me um, in the future as I pursue a degree in a degree in civil engineering um, or environmental engineering I'm not certain yet but uh, the capstone class has been quite a, a great learning opportunity for me. She is representing her project on her jacket. She has lots of little cute little bird pins and patches. Um, next, if I can, yeah, that's just not going to work for me. I'm sorry. Um, next, we have Adam Beard. Adam is also a senior, and I will let him talk about what he has been doing. Good evening, board members. My name is Adam Beard. I'm a senior at uh, Ozark High School, and uh, I have been going to the Finley Farms Mill restaurant, working in the back of the house uh, through an internship through the Capstone program. My Capstone Academies uh, originally are uh, mathematics and engineering, but then I dabbled here uh, in the uh, human resources and services industry. Uh, I have learned or I, right now, am taking the Pro Start class, uh, which is a two-block class, uh, lasts an entire year long, that goes more in-depth with the uh, culinary uh, learning or education uh, that you could have in high school. Uh, but I will say, as grateful I am to be in that class, it does not provide the same kind of education that this internship has provided for me. It's quite different from having three hours a day in a very stable environment, which is <laughs> right on that wall, uh, with an amazing instructor, Chef Watts, uh, compared to my A days with the other day, uh, which is also two hours long going to the inter uh, intern here at the mill, uh, where I work as an intern inside of an actual kitchen. And uh, instead of working for three hours on one, uh, singular dish. I'm working for three hours on a list of tasks in order for this business to sustainably operate. And I would not have gotten the uh, experience with some of the uh, technologies that this kitchen has. I would not have gotten the experience with learning and uh, working with other people who work inside of a kitchen. Uh, I feel like this uh, opportunity that I have gotten uh, this year uh, I'm genuinely grateful for it. Um, if I have not, I don't think that uh, going after high school into a kitchen would be as easy as it could be because I seem to like a stone person. Um, all that said, I'm very grateful and uh, hopefully it will serve to uh, help teach future students beyond me. So just 
a quick wrap up, I think our goals for academies in the future are just to continue some of the great stuff that these kids have, have uh, talked to you about tonight. Um, we'd like to you know, provide some more internships, registered youth apprenticeships, and just expand those pathways and continue um, you know, getting more kids involved in this. So thank you all for, for your support. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a uh, next we'll move on to superintendent's update. Dr. Wilson. I just want to say thank you for allowing uh, us to go to the National Superintendents Conference. And uh, Dr. Carson and myself both attended, and we there were numerous sessions to uh, take part in, but we really tried to focus on AI and cybersecurity. And so those were some great sessions that we both learned a lot, and, and uh, know that you know cybersecurity and AI are definitely on the forefront of the nation's schools, and where we're headed with that. And um, I would say that. Probably this, from an AI standpoint, was more from an instructional capacity versus uh, policies and regulations because they're very similar to us that they don't have those policies and regulations yet and they're having to develop those. But uh, in the cybersecurity, they definitely, the sessions that I went to, um, the, the, most, the largest market for cybersecurity or for cyber attacks is education, and that it is growing. Um, and there are things that we have to do already that Dr. Chesick is, is well aware, and he keeps you know pushing cybersecurity on us. Um, that we check boxes and we say these are the things that we're doing, and we've got insurance, but it is going to become more of a law and mandate in the next couple of years of things that we're going to have to do as a school to show that we are cybersecurity aware of what we're doing. And so uh, lots of things coming down the pike on AI and cybersecurity. And then um, I also say that uh, I will continue to watch any legislative updates. Uh, we have a meeting every Monday morning um, with area superintendents, statewide superintendents on anything that, that is happening. And, um, there is the open enrollment bill did pass the House and went to the Senate. Um, but right now, uh, it's not. It's not how the Senate for, so I think that the Senate is struggling a little bit. Um, so just to let you know that we will continue to watch all of those. And then the MSB, uh, the MSBA update, uh, Patty uh, did put in some videos there, but uh, she is not here to give you an update. And uh, you are free to will to read the Assistant Superintendent's reports. Thank you. Thank you for Go ahead and add one thing about the super, assistant superintendent reports. I appreciate it. There's valuable information in this. I want to make sure that there's a link to the enrollment information. That's awesome. There's, uh, uh, oh, and I have two questions. One for Dr. Jensen. I'm sure you're going to answer this. <laughs> Is the heat of working at the high school? It's like done being fixed. I mean, I know we're going to here this week. <laughs> But no, we're, you're talking about the energy savings company, the no, whole switch over. I mean, people still say it's cool. Yeah, and when you, when, when you look at it, they're running. There was uh, a one weekend where they shut off and they went in on Sunday. Uh, the, the igniter did not like one of them. Uh, we had one of our tech, one of our maintenance people went in and, and lit it on Sunday. When you go to the classrooms and say they're cold, we adjust the thermostat and the, it gets to the get temperature. Okay. So, I, so it actually, it, it works. There's no it's been working. Yes, that's not a problem. Yeah. I, I just wanted to ask you. But if I give that real quick shout out, that the ESCO that, you know, we're doing the whole switch over, the, the boiler pipe's going in, we're getting ready. We, we mentioned that in there. August 1st yeah. is the scheduled day for the new, the new cooler to be set and turned on. Right, so we, we're going to, as of today, hit the mark for a new HVAC and heating system at the high school for next year. Being August first, being set August first, but everything, but everything's plumbed, okay. ready to go. They're going to set it, and then we're going to commission it thereafter. Okay, so the higher commission. 
Even if something happens, a train has chillers on trailers that will pull up and they pull them right into the system that we'll have in place. So we will have a new system next year. Thank you. And I saw something about SOC's roof is getting ready to start. It's going up a bit. So we've done all the roof work. The escrow designers come out and done all the architectural engineering component of it. We're scheduled to go out at the end of this month for bid. And we'll have those scheduled. They're actually the spring break and some other things. Those bids won't be back until after next month's board meeting. But we believe, and Esther Snyder believes, she just closed one out today, that it's looking good. There's a lot of bidders. And that there's a, we will bring it to the April board meeting for approval. And if the board votes to go ahead and do it, then there's a month to mobilize. And she feels confident that's still enough time to do it this summer. So we'll move ahead. Thank you for giving us those reports. And thank you for making the links available for public to see them and doing the work on it. Thank you. 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 Any other comments or questions on superintendent's reports or super, assistant superintendent's reports? Moving on to future dates. Dr. Wilson, do you have anything to add on these? Do you have any highlights or anything? We've got more. We do have the, sorry. We do have the middle school ribbon cutting camp coming up on March the 8th. Um, and then the legislative lunch and learns. That's just something that you can participate in at your, at your leisure. And then we have um, the April 9th probably is a big day for advocacy, but I would highly encourage everyone to head to Jefferson City to talk to your senators and your representatives. And then as the time, as we get closer to dates, and they, we will continue to update this with more information. I have two questions about that. Okay. I have two questions. I have two questions about that too. I'm sure The April 18th board meeting? Yes. I thought there was some kind of rule that that has Ooh. to be maybe a, a certain time frame of the election it does so we'll have to adjust that i think i have it on i have a regular board meeting on my calendar and i probably missed that i thought it yeah it has to be yeah. yes we have, you are correct okay yeah. right. just check on that so yeah people, um, and yeah. the second one yeah the second one you might not know because of course it's like here but you know the planning means the strategic planning means there was that one that was canceled because of snow are we is that being scheduled for some time so we actually need to go to the board um we had two different dates that we scheduled it for um most recent was april 20th or sorry it was february 20th but we hit a school it was a city council meeting there were there was too many things going on so uh, we're looking to schedule it for after spring break uh, but if you have a preferred date i know tuesdays what we have been doing, but Tuesdays are inconvenient for, and I wish uh, some of our county people were there, for, for some of our elected officials. Yeah, so, I hope it's on a Tuesday. Then I can look at it for a Thursday that's not a school board meeting, if that's... Or if there's city councils on Mondays, right? Could they're on Mondays unless it's a holiday, last, then it's a Tuesday. Right. So it could be the last Monday, maybe? I mean, I don't know. Just, you could do it on a Saturday. <laughs> 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 Seven o'clock in the morning. Well, I'll send you. I'll send you a couple links, a couple dates, and, and you let us. We'll do a poll and see what we. Yeah, so, yeah, so. I appreciate that. Thanks for checking with us. Okay, moving on. Item sixteen. We need to approve the consent agenda. I'm sorry. I'm, I have one other one. Oh okay. sure. Go ahead. Royce, help me. With full song, but I can see this one and this is my fault. The vehicle we said we're going to out. I just wanted to have some nice explanation about it. Curtis or Dr. Aikens, would you like to explain that one? The vehicle we said in Sorry, are we pulling for new business or just doing it? Oh, well, which one we kind of thought that I don't care. We want just to oh, talk. We'll see if we have some clarity. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. keep it in the back. So, uh, early childhood. Uh, we're currently, we have, I believe I said in there, two buses. This will be our third bus. Um, Laura Aikens, Dr. Aikens, has uh, access to state funds or federal funds that offset the, the offset the 100% reimbursement for it. And we do have two students that need a chairlift, and we currently don't have a SXC uh, bus with a chairlift. So this is just an opportunity for us to get a full 100% reimbursed bus to meet the needs of our students. 
Is there you'd like to add, Dr. Akers? No, thank you. Okay. It's good. fully awesome. reimbursed, though. Good, good work. Yeah. And it's, re, it's not reimbursed the year that we purchased it, but yeah. it's uh, a one year south behind, so you get it next year. Yeah. Yeah. Those taxpayer dollars. Yes. Yeah. So is it okay to leave it there and go for the consent? Oh, sure. Okay. Yes, I just wanted to have sure. sure. uh, the right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion by Amber to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mark. All in favor? Thank you. And let's see, moving on here. My computer's kind of small. I'll get my hard copy. Minutes. Okay, four minutes. Long approval of the board application open session minutes. I'm pressing on this one too. Number 20C, where we, yeah, it says we approve the job descriptions for gross collections. Under new business, let us see approved job description. Remember, we talked about that. That's our reason. And we're going to have an update with salary. <laughs> So, so the salary portion. Salary salary there was something changed. that wasn't on there that they were going to add on there. So I just it was a so. change. Uh, I thought I sent it, but maybe I didn't. Uh, so but yes, it was changing from a school police officer to a school resource officer. Right. And, and it's also a sheriff salary. And sheriff salary. Yes. We changed all of that. And it says department on there. Yes. And, and some of them have their salary on there, and some of them don't. Really have the as far as their. Uh, where it goes to. Where? Yeah, I'll give that to you. Okay, thank you. Right. We did make all those changes you requested. Okay, yeah. thank you. And that's my fault if you get that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I just need a motion to approve the department. Open session is. I make that motion. And I have a motion by Mark. And I just need a second. I'll second. And second by Guy. All in favor? Thank you. We have the new business letter A, lead testing agreement. We have a recommendation to approve the lead testing agreement with Tara Khan. Yeah, I'll move over here because there's a small presentation that way I don't want my yeah. back to you Thank or you. the screen. So, yeah, that's great. Right. Um, yeah, do you want the motion first? I'll make yeah. a motion. We have a motion first by Amber, and I just need a second, and then we'll discuss. Second right. by Mark, right. now we'll discuss. Thank you, Dr. Chester. I mean, go to get that. Try that. Okay, we don't have a presentation. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's coming. She's going to give access. She's going she's to grant access real quick. Well, what she's doing now, I'll just get started. Yeah. This is one of those uh, wonderful things that the uh, government decides to put on us every now and then, and every school district, and it's RSMO 160.077. Mm -hmm. All school districts across the state are required to do lead testing, and we can break it down. And we have until August 1st of 2024, or the first day of school, which in our case is later, uh, to test all uh, points that students can get water, which for us is over 1,300. And we have some great classrooms at elementary, uh, but by law, they can walk up and they can get a cup of water out of the sink in the elementary classroom. And in three of our buildings, they can turn a bubbler on the same sink and get a drink of water. Both of those. They're well hydrated. Yeah, <laughs> but both of those have to be tested. So uh, this is something many school districts have done already. Uh, we're in the process of doing it now, uh, mostly because we have five building projects finishing up. We have an ESCO going on, so we still have plenty of time to get there. We've met with two different companies uh, personally, walked around, looked at our facilities. Uh, we received bids from both of them. This is the least expensive with remediation recommendations and breakdown of the analysis. Um, so we, if you go to the next slide, please. It's real clear. We have to honor for January 24. Each school shall conduct an inventory of all drinking water outlets and all outlets that are used for dispensing water, cooking or cleaning, cooking and eating utensils in each of the school buildings. Where every student could possibly get water, even in the bathroom. If they're walking in there and they got a water bottle in there or they stick their hand underneath there and they take a drink, 
they can go ahead and uh, we have to test that. So we have our plan. We've worked with uh, both of these and, and we know that you approved Terracon. They're ready to move ahead as soon as we sign the contract. As far as uh, testing, we've conducted an inventory of all of our locations. That's how we know the number. Next slide, please. So what Air what Terracon's recommendation is, is for 63,300, now that's a big number. And somebody, whenever, this is Kirk's political, whenever there's a law passed, trace the dollars, somebody's gonna make money somehow, somewhere. Uh, this is Ozark's contribution to get the lead out of all the schools across Missouri. But fortunately, this is one of those things where the state says, here's some money to go along with that. We'll look at that at the end. So um, a one-time one -time fee of $63,300, which is gonna take them 10 mobilizations, so that's 10 times they're gonna to have to come down and do Ozark. This is a, you probably don't care, but just as a little nerd, it, 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 before they do the test, they have to come down and flush the line of all 1,300 plus points of contact. Then within 18 hours, it was less than 24 hours, between 18 and 24 hours, they come down and take a sampling from those that they just flushed out. Well, that takes 10 mobilizations to get all of our buildings into there. So professional labor and supplies, Terracon's gonna come down. Uh, many other districts have utilized them and, and they, they are very happy with their service and their productivity. Uh, labor fees for lead test analysis of 1,320 drinking water samples. <clears throat> shipping and the report and the report is the one of the keys um, the other company that came out with us they gave us two quotes one was we're just going to do the water sampling that's half the law the other half of the law is reports that we can put on our website that everybody can read and understand and remediation recommendations um, and when they added that component in they exceeded the sixty three thousand dollars by a, a pretty good amount uh, next slide, please. All of this say there, that's a lot of money. Ozark's portion of the grant is one, $129,000 plus. We have done the first step of applying saying, yes, we want this money. And then we go through the process and we can claim that through, now we've tested, give us this. There will be remediation. I, I don't want to um, coat that. Every district we've talked to has had some remediation. The level is five parts per billion. The drinking water supply can have 15 parts per billion. So the state or the, the, the school's requirements are going to be greater than what our drinking water supply can be. But by waiting a little bit, we've actually learned from several districts and would, by walking around with both companies, both of them have said, this is one of the things to see. This is one of the ones. So they give us some tips. So for example, we know that the aerators on your faucets, the things that you unscrew, that when water comes out, it breaks it up so it's just not going everywhere or controls it. That's one of the highest concentrates of uh, problematic that require remediation. So we took it, we have $129,000. We took it upon ourselves to be proactive. We ordered those and we're gonna start replacing those. And that'll be something that goes towards the uh, grant that we'll be able to claim that against. We are pretty confident. Most of the laws, as you look at it, 1988 is a sweet point in changing uh, fixtures, even the lead that you use in your solder. So we look at our buildings, there's really two that come into control. What are they going to look like? Tiger Paw, we've done a complete remodel of both, of two large sections of it. There's two wings and um, work with the care to learn area that we've not touched. So I can't say we haven't touched. It's been touched over years, but we don't know what we're gonna find. So is it more than five, or five parts per million? We don't know based on what everybody else has seen. We're probably gonna have some remediation there. Uh, and then likewise, junior high, 1960s, there's, there's probably gonna be some remediation there. And we have confidence that we'll have time to do it. Uh, even, but, and, I, and when I say remediation, we have money. Okay, this is the grant that we have. We've claimed that we want all of that money. We just have to apply for it after we acquire it. 
Some schools will simply put, and if by law you can do it, we can put a not potable sign next to a sink if we find that that the high, and many schools have done that. Many schools have gone in the bathrooms and said, not potable, we're not gonna test it, we're not gonna drink it, we're just gonna ignore it. Including our neighbors in the and, and you know me, I'm gonna do the letter of the law, and we're gonna test wherever kids can get it, and we're gonna make sure we can remediate everywhere we can. So, how much of um, go, go ahead. How much of the grant do you think it's used enough to be part? I think it's a great idea to go change all those little areas. How much of that is being used on that? Not much. No, two to three thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's of that hundred of that thirteen. I mean, we're we're, we're doing about a thousand of those. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all built different at different times. So it's, we went around, uh, Mitch Maples actually, one of our maintenance people, went around and identified all of the different ones that we could possibly have, so, yeah. So we love Mitch. Yeah, I was gonna say. So my recommendation would be to, uh, the state law also to approve this, uh, uh, the, get the let out agreement with Terracom as presented. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Just comparing with the other districts, if you know, we might not even know what the, and maybe the other districts don't say. How did it turn out with their tests? I know some districts really had a lot of remediation and some didn't have very much all, but how did it turn out with the costs of that? Do those pay on comparison yeah. to our grant? I mean, we'll pay spend a half of it on the on the company. Yeah. Would we, would we still have enough left afterwards to do all of the remediation that might be required based on other districts? That's a tough question, yeah, but as but we've talked about this when we have the assistant superintendent meetings for the, the COC, which we have a few other schools coming and joining those. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about it. Um, there, nobody's really gone too far. Now there are some of our friends to the west that have lead mines. So you know, if, if your water coming into your building is higher than that, oh, yeah. there there's a higher uh, number to that. There, the water filtration system you have. <coughs> at the source becomes more expensive. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, I haven't heard anybody say that they've exceeded the grant amount. Oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for letting me ask you to say that. Well, yeah, I kind of yeah. spot no. I appreciate that. Yeah, please know that. Yeah, that's not a, don't write that No, out. no, I'm just saying. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board? Thank you, Dr. Jason. Thank you. So I just, uh, all in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Next we have the letter B twenty four twenty five school calendar. Doctor Wilson. Okay, so I want to present the twenty four twenty five school calendar and ask that you approve it. But I'd like to give you a little bit of background information on how we came up with this calendar. Um, first of all. We have to, all schools, if you remember a few years ago, it was how many days in the year that you went to school, now it's how many hours in the year. So all schools, all schools are required to go 1,044 hours. Bottom line, base, 1,044 hours. But we go more than that, as most schools do, because you were then, above and beyond that, supposed to put build in 36 hours for snow days, for weather, for something like that. Cyber tax, cyber tax, <laughs> cyber tax. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Which it has happened. Missouri school this week, I think. Yes. Hopefully, snow days. But then, I don't know if you remember the days uh, a few years ago. I know that one of my first teaching assignments, we were out from like December 8th, and it did include cr a Christmas break until almost like January 16th. I mean, I'm like, this is a good gig. I'm not going back to school. But, you have to, at the end of the year, during that time frame, if you miss so much, you have to make it up. And you are always waiting to see how many of those days you're going to have to make up. And then they would say maybe one day for every two. So what they have changed is, is that you're required now to put 36 hours of makeup days in there, or makeup hours. But then, if you even extend that to 60 hours, not 60 above 36, but 60 hours, if you build that into your calendar, and then you have an instance like that or an event like that, 
then you do not have to make up all those additional hours over 60. You do not have to make up the two for one. It's already built in and it's everything's forgiven. So we really try to build in the 60 hours and then we have a little bit more than that also. Um, it is a balancing act on student instructional days, teacher contracts, when you can start school a few years ago, the, the law came into effect that you couldn't start, I believe, two weeks. Um, you could only start two weeks prior to Labor Day, and that really threw things off. So there's a lot of things that you have to think about when you're making a calendar. Um, so on this one, what, what we did this year was I met on a Wednesday afternoon. I had the sec I had secondary principals and a representative from each school. And then another meeting, I had the elementary principals and a representative from each school. And we went through this information, and we went through what was important to each of those groups, and just had roundtable discussions. I took that information and then put together a couple of calendars, and then I brought the elementary and the secondary into the same uh, into the same meeting. And I think that was a really good uh, meeting because. They live in two different worlds and they can see what's important to elementary and what's important to secondary and why we have to really work together on that. And you know, one of the, the big things for secondary, if you look at, look at a calendar, the days that they have in class in the first semester are more than the second semester. And you really, you know, for us, we don't want to end the semester in January to balance those, but then you don't want to have a whole lot a lot more in that first section, first semester, than you do the second semester. So there's just, like I said, it's a balancing act. So uh, we came together, we discussed it, and then uh, I, I sent out two calendars. And what this school has done in the past, and we did this time too, is that we sent two different calendars to the teachers and to the administrators, and then they voted on those calendars. Uh, there were some differences, but this is a calendar that hands down 90% voted on. Uh, and so I just want to give you just a couple of changes that were made. So if you look on August the 20th, the first day of school, elementary teachers totally get this. It's hard going to hold you on those loved ones. It really is. And so one of the things that they really wanted to, to try to do is, do we have to start on Monday? So as we were able to do this, and at least start on a Tuesday. Um, the next big thing, if you look at November, November the 5th. Now this was a day that I put in there and I told them that I felt that this was what was needed. Um, and it won't be in our calendar next year. So this did limit us a little bit, but if you notice that date, it is the election, the national election. And our schools are used as polling places. And we will have a teacher work day that day, but our students will not be in the buildings. And then, um, let's see here, another change is in January. This year, our teachers came back, I think it was on a Thursday, or a Wednesday or a Thursday, I don't remember what it was, and they had a work day, a PLC day, and then the students came back. This time, they moved to the Monday, so they wouldn't come back on a Thursday or Friday. So we were able to do that. Another change was in uh, the March, at spring break, we had had a PLC day on the day after spring break, and we moved that to the day before spring break. Then other than that, most of those uh, dates really match up pretty much with what was done this year. Okay, So um, I am asking that you approve this. Now next year, we will have an earlier process, and the goal is to meet with the pretty much the same group of people since they've been through this process once. Um, meet with them in October, have conversations, come back in November to look at some calendars, take it to the people, uh, to the teachers, and then bring it to you in December, and then also bring you two years worth of calendars. So instead of just approving one year at a time, you would begin to do two years at a time so that we are already, we'll always be forward looking. So I ask that you approve this calendar for the 24 25 school year. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? I have a question. Sure. Different districts do it different ways, so I just got to make sure I know how it goes. How do we do 
professional development days. Do teachers take those days off individually through the year, or those are all on those orange, on those Mondays or whatever? So in this calendar, um, they're all on those days except for one. And I think that was unique to this calendar. It's a flex day. We want to keep our teachers at 100, at this point, 182 days um, as far as their contracts. But you have to balance teacher contracts and instructional days. And if you take away, uh, if you give teachers another uh, professional development day or PLC day in here, then you're taking away an instructional day. So this year we're going to try something different and um, give them a flex day that to award them that we know that they come in in August. We know they work at Christmas time. We know they work at spring break. And so they're going to have to give us a plan or give us a report on what they have done and that will count. So all the orange are their PLC days, that's what you're asking, and we have one flex day where we're, we're granting them time on their own, but they have to show us what it is. That's good. Some, the reason I ask is because there's some concern in some districts that they don't have them all on the same day, and I know that there's a lot more information and I just don't know about it, but the teachers are randomly, every single week, they're out of the classroom, a lot. A lot of the teachers are out of the classroom, so the kids have reported out of more subs every day sure. the subs. and that's not good for their instruction so i just wonder do we have them on different days or we all we, we, we do that day. Day. we do both oh, we, do. we try to get the majority of it here okay. but let's say if we have a, a plc initiative and we have someone that's coming to town mm -hmm. then in the past we may have taken them two days for the people to learn about this because that speaker can't come on Monday. Right, right. So the majority of the, the things that were really, that was one of the reasons of going to all day to give them what their plan time was, to give them uh, time to collaborate, uh, work in their teams and with their, uh, with their departments, as well as try to build uh, professional development on those days. We'll never get away uh, pulling them to go somewhere else. We'll never, I mean, because there's too many options. more rare than more. That's, that's where we're headed. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to away from their classroom because the students need to stay in that Sure. Okay. Just check out how we did it. Yeah, it's a little bit of right now. Any other questions or comments? And I need to go ahead and take a motion. I know we're trying to get into the habit of making our motion and second first, so I would like to make the motion. I'll make a motion to approve that. Motion. Motion. Okay. And second. second. And oh. Any questions or comments? And all in favor of approving the calendar? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have letter C approving change orders. My recommendation is to approve change orders, high school activities, number three, and uh, storm shelter. We have a motion by Mark. Thank you. And second, I'll have a discussion. Any questions or comments? Oh, yeah. So on the first one, on the middle school, I'm just making sure I'm reading these correctly. I'm going to read these. Yep. I'm to make sure I'm reading them correctly. That one is a credit to our contingency. Yes, that is. And this, oh, go ahead. No, it's a credit. Okay. And the second one, that's a deduction from their contingency, right? So. Oh, sorry. The second one's the high school. Yes. So the next two are. So oh, and, and, right. And so I didn't say this last one. Um, it's not so they have a contingency and we have a contingency. At the end, it's all Ozark money. It's not if they don't spend this money, Branco walks out with a check for ninety-five thousand dollars. That money goes back to Ozark schools. So we didn't have to spend. Correct. Right. So it, it, regardless of whether it's ours or theirs, uh -huh. it's it, it it all comes back to Ozark. So it doesn't matter where it's deducted from. It's it's a matter of they're not here tonight, so I can say it's it's kind of a matter of and I don't want to say pride because that's not the right thing, you know when you're doing this it's a subcontractor to a contractor of Branco missed something, or, or it's an architect or an engineer or a furniture or somebody missed something over here. Mm -hmm. They they just want to be more right at the end, right? So it's that we both they both have a contingency. Ours is along the design, design phase, which we could, um, and we did a lot with um, in the last ones. Dr. Bauman would come in and say, hey, I would like this change. So then that's on us. So we've been really fortunate. We haven't had any changes. 
on our side to, to date. Okay. So. Thank you. And thank you for letting me ask that last month. I just, I've been around in the service industry, and I know you go and you get a bid, and if you made a mistake on your bid, and you ended up having to spend more time doing it, or whatever, you just part, you just swallowed that loss because you didn't make a good enough bid. But I didn't know how it worked in a multi million dollar. Yeah, and with a CM, with a construction manager at risk, if it was a hard bid, so if it was a hard bid, our contract dollars would go back, would go down on the middle school. It would go down by $3,507. Right. But we have the contingency, so that's the, the, the wiggle room. And it's, it, it speeds up the process and it allows us to have more flexibility. Uh, and just likewise, too, on their side, if we had to come back and re do the rework on the curb, like the one at the high school, that's a $2,600 add. So we, we, our contract numbers will be the same now all the way throughout. And if we're as fortunate, and I, I say that because I don't want to jinx this, I don't believe in that, but um, we're, we, we are on our last bond in the 2020 on that CMAR process, we were, we didn't go over, we, we were on. So, but on the hard bid, we had to come back and add money to that contract. So it's okay. just a way for us to stay on budget and really manage it a little and bit better. And we don't go over when you take that money back? We get it back. Okay. So, like, when there's a correction of something they ordered from one part, they have to reduce it, and that's on them. Most. And we get it yeah. back. Yeah. So, like, but on the... You said, oh, we want a different design, but they, they actually didn't think of something. Right. So if they, if they just did something, if they misbid something, like a subcontractor just misbid something, right. They're going to be held accountable for that. But like with the high school, so like um, with Tiger Paul. So on the on the PEMB, the pre-engineered metal building, the item two for five hundred eighty-seven dollars. It was an item that the roof flashing, the roofer thought it was in the PEMB bid, and the PEM PEMB thought it was in the roof bid. Nobody bid that. Nobody bid it. So we have to have roof flashing, roof edge. So it's five hundred eighty-seven dollars. So that's so that's it was. That's not them. It, it's no. It's not really no. It's, it was it was it wasn't accounted for. They didn't they didn't order the wrong. They didn't mess up. They didn't put a wall in wrong right. or they were they had to tear it out. Okay. It was a, a scope gap. Okay. Thank you for letting me ask about those. It helps me understand how it goes. Okay. All that transparency makes builds trust. Yeah, I like talking, so it's <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Jason. Any other questions or comments? Everything um, on track still in mean, the Tiger Paul. Final call. The Tiger Paul still on track, but the next one is going to be done, right? Yes, so we are. Um, and I, we, we got set back uh, a couple times on the middle school. We're still, we weren't supposed to open until next year. Then we opened up in January. So great job for Branco and Esther Snyder on that. Um, we are, we will have in the month of April, we will serve our first meals out of Tiger Pop or Wing Child Foods. Okay. As we look now. We also, um, this is a bigger reach, and I'm not, please don't write this down, we're just talking. <laughs> um, you know, as we do the high school, and we take the HVAC system down to the high school this summer, that's going to really be good in the end, but in the, in the interim, it's going to impact our summer program, summer basketball, volleyball, and all. So we are very hopeful, uh, and as we look at it, we are very hopeful that we will have the new storm shelter open that will help offset that. And we, we have gyms all across the district. That's not going to be that huge of inconvenience. But if your locker rooms at the high school and your equipment's at the high school, it would make it a lot easier if we could just move it down the hall. So we're, we're still on. And most importantly, it's not, it's not a bond issue, but it's the ESCO. As of this week, the, the question I ask at the end of each week we're meeting is when is the chiller arriving? And the answer was later in August and consistently now it is still scheduled and it's on train schedule to arrive, be craned on to the pad 
on August 1st. So that's 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 huge. They're all important, but that one is will be a lot of stress off of me. I know some previous assistant superintendents and superintendents will breathe easier as well. Any other questions or comments? And we just need a vote now to approve the change orders. All in favor? Thank you. Next, we just need to, one last thing on the agenda to approve the job description for the teacher at uh, the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, Dr. Wilson. Do you have the motion first? Oh, yes, it looks like thank you. Motion? I'm lying to. Yes. <laughs> this is good. Motion by Guy. And second by Mark. Thank you. Dr. Wilson. Okay, I entertain questions because I actually have Dr. Evans here that she can help us. So what questions do you have about this one? I'm sorry. <coughs> My understanding is it's not a new position, it's just a new job description. Is that, that is correct? Correct. correct. It's not a new position, we're just position. defining the position that is correct. So yes. we have had somebody doing that, we just haven't had a job description specifying that position. Okay, yes. yes. That's what I want. Yes. Any other questions? Are there, are there changes that were substantially different from the old one, or you just kind of like? I believe the old one was just a special ed teacher, and that doesn't really define this person's role or their job description and how we, how we service students. And so they have a different criteria that they get a death certificate for, and we want to recognize that in their job description. And, and that is something that over the next year we will probably bring more because I think that we have been more generic in our job descriptions, such as teacher. And so we've got, we're, we're going to have to, as things develop, we will have to do what she has done with this, is modify the positions that we're in so that we know when we're hiring someone that they have a skill set that matches what we need. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? And just a vote. All in favor? Thank you. Now we just need a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Motion by Mark, second by Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.